Australia's pursuit of a robust integrated air and missile defense system has gained urgency in response to the evolving strategic landscape of the Indo-Pacific, where advanced missile threats, including ballistic and hypersonic systems, are reshaping regional security dynamics. The 2023 Defense Strategic Review underscored the need for enhanced long-range air and missile defense capabilities to counter these threats, prompting Australia to evaluate the Lockheed Martin Typhon system, a containerized mobile missile launcher, as a potential cornerstone of its defense modernization. The Typhon, also known as the Strategic Mid-Range Fire System, offers a military off-the-shelf solution that could address critical gaps in Australia's current surface-to-air missile arsenal, particularly in long-range and ballistic missile defense. As Australia considers integrating Typhon into its IAMD framework under Project AR-6500, several strategic, operational, and logistical factors must be weighed to ensure alignment with national defense priorities and regional security objectives. The Typhon system, derived from the proven MK-41 vertical launch system, is a highly mobile, containerized launcher housed in a 40-foot ISO container, transportable by truck, ship, or air. Each launcher contains four cells capable of firing standard Missile 6, Tomahawk cruise missiles, and potentially Patriot Advanced Capability 3 Missile Segment Enhancement Interceptors. The SM-6, with a range of 240 to 320 kilometers, provides multi-role capabilities against aircraft, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles in their terminal phase, and surface targets, including ships and land-based assets. Its limited effectiveness against hypersonic boost glide vehicles highlights a need for future upgrades, but its versatility makes it a strong candidate for layered defense. The Tomahawk, with a range of up to 2,500 kilometers, adds long-range strike options for land attack and anti-ship missions, enhancing Australia's offensive deterrence. PAC-3 MSC integration would further bolster defense against tactical ballistic missiles, offering a complementary capability to the SM-6. Typhon's modularity and compatibility with Aegis-derived fire control and the integrated battle command system make it an attractive option for integration into Australia's broader IA architecture, particularly under AR-6500, which aims to unify sensors, interceptors, and command systems. Australia's current SAM capabilities, centered on the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System NASAMS and Naval SM-2 Block 3C and SM-6 missiles, are limited in range and ballistic missile defense. NASAMS, with a maximum range of 70 kilometers using AMRAAM ER missiles, excels in short to medium range defense but cannot address long range or advanced ballistic threats like China's DF-26 missile. The Royal Australian Navy's recent $7 billion acquisition of SM-23C and SM-6 for Hobart-class destroyers and future Hunter-class frigates enhances naval air defense, but these platforms are constrained by supply shortages and lack advanced technologies like lateral thrusters for highly maneuverable targets. Typhon's ground-based mobile launchers offer a complementary solution, extending engagement ranges and enabling distributed operations across Australia's vast northern approaches. Its planned demonstration during the 2025 Talisman Sabre exercise with the U.S. Army will allow Australia to assess its operational suitability, building on recent deployments like the 2024 Salaknib exercise in the Philippines, where Typhon covered strategic areas of the South China Sea. Strategically, Typhon aligns with Australia's multi-domain defense objectives under AUKUS Pillar 2, which emphasizes networked air and missile defense with the US and UK. The system's ability to engage air, sea, and land targets strengthens Australia's role as a regional security partner, supporting deterrence in contested areas like the South China Sea. However, its deployment could provoke geopolitical backlash as seen in China's criticism of Typhon's use in the Philippines in 2024 and Japan's refusal to host the system due to regional sensitivities. Australia must navigate these tensions carefully, 
balancing deterrence with diplomatic considerations to avoid escalating conflicts or alienating regional partners. Domestically, public concerns about entanglement in U.S.-China rivalries could complicate adoption, necessitating clear communication about Typhon's defensive and strategic benefits. Operationally, Typhon's containerized design offers significant advantages for rapid deployment and flexibility. Its air transportability and compatibility with existing platforms like the C-17 suit, Australia's need for agile, distributed operations across remote territories. However, the current tractor-trailer configuration is large, and the U.S. Army's efforts to develop a smaller variant suggest Australia may need to evaluate whether a more compact system better meets its needs. Training Australian forces to operate and maintain Typhon, as demonstrated by Philippine troops in 2024, will be critical, as will ensuring seamless integration with Air 6500's command and control architecture. Lockheed Martin's $500 million Australian dollars contract for Air 6500's first phase positions Typhon as a natural fit, but interoperability with NASAMS, Naval Aegis systems, and emerging sensors like CEA Technologies radars requires rigorous testing. Logistically, Typhon's adoption faces challenges related to missile supply and sustainment. The U.S. produces approximately 125 SM-6 missiles annually, with plans to scale to 300 by 2028, but global demand and existing RAND commitments could strain availability. Tomahawk and Pac-3 MSE supply chains face similar constraints, requiring Australia to secure long-term agreements, potentially through AUKUS collaboration. Engaging Australian industry, such as Raytheon Australia, BAE Systems, and Varley Group, already involved in NASAMs and ESSM programs, could support local maintenance and component production, aligning with Australia's defense industrial strategy. Cost is another critical factor, with a U.S. Typhon battery, four launchers, operations center, and support equipment costing approximately $233 million for procurement and $183 million for research and development in FY 2025. Australia's defense budget at 2% of GDP and aiming for 2.3% by 2033 to 34, must balance Typhon against competing priorities like THAAD or additional NASAMS upgrades. Technologically, Typhon is a proven system with successful SM-6 and Tomahawk launches in 2023 and operational deployments in 2024. However, its Pac-3 MSE integration is less mature and its ability to counter emerging hypersonic threats remains limited, necessitating future upgrades or complementary systems. Australia must also consider Typhon's long-term adaptability to evolving threats, such as hypersonic missiles, which may require integration with advanced sensors or interceptors. The system's open architecture supports such upgrades, but investment in research and development will be necessary to keep pace with adversaries' capabilities.